Hi there, this is Professor Juris, and I wanted to make you a quick little video and show you how to gild a palladium print with gold. Now this process will work for um, any of your alternative processes. Um, it'll work for um, cyanotype, Van Dyke Brown, Kala type, salt prints, um, as long as you're putting the images on uh, transparent vellum. And I will uh, show you that here in a minute. So there, I just wanted to show you at the start the uh, print that I started with. This is a palladium print. Um, and I figure at this point you know how to get to this point. So I don't need to go back and explain to you the coding, whether you're doing a cyanotype, um, if you're doing a Van Dyke Brown, um, whichever process you choose to use, um, I'm assuming that you can get to this point. Um, the only difference between this and prints you've probably made in the past is that you're going to be printing this on vellum paper. And I'll talk about vellum paper here in a minute, but let's take a look real quick at the way the print looks after it's been gilded. So this is um, the image that um, I've gilded, and I haven't put the varnish on it yet, and at the end I will show you a picture um, of the image with the varnish. The uh, print has actually just been varnished and it's drying, so I wanted to let it dry before I take a photograph of it. But um, this is the way it looks, so again, we're coming from... Uh, that or from this image to this image um, you can kind of compare the tones going on there between the two and it has to be something that you like and again you can do this with um, a lot of different types of uh, metal foils so you can get these in um, like a palladium you can get them in copper you get them in silver and coat the back of this and I'm going to explain to you in this video how I go through and do this in case you uh, like this process and um, you know you want to do it a lot of people think this is um, the most gorgeous process that there is out there and um, the, to be truthful with you the the images on the computer really don't do the the image justice I think um, you know I was looking at this and I had made another one and I didn't think it looked that great on the computer so I went ahead and did a second one and it still doesn't have the beauty that the actual image itself has so if you ever get a chance to look at one of these um, in person please take a look at it because they're a lot more beautiful than they are um, you know showing on the computer screen and that goes for like a palladium and platinum print too I think I think just looking at them on a computer you can't really see the depth that's in them if you holding them in your hand so okay so let's get started on this okay so this is the material that I'm going to be um, making my print on and it, um, the important thing is um, the, the weight of it. You want it to be at least around a 55 pound um, and a neutral pH. Um, but you want it to be around 55 pound because you don't want real thin vellum because um, the vellum is so um, sensitive to when it's wet. Um, when you're going to make a print on it and so forth. So it can tear very easily. And it also will wrinkle more. And, um, and when you put the gilding glue on it can also tear real easily so you want a fairly substantial um, weight of um, vellum and that's the important thing and I just bought this one on Amazon and um, you can find it there but um, it's important to get a good vellum I just want to point that out if you go down to the dollar store or something and buy some some real thin vellum or some tracing paper it's um, it's just not going to give you the same thing and it's not worth the the metal salts that you're going to put on top of it so in the long run you're better off just buying good materials so just um i would look for at least a 55 pound and um, this brand seems to be working real good i've used this for a couple of years now so it does work really well um, i'm going to look at some other ones too to see if i can find one that's even a little bit heavier but um, for now this is the, the vellum that i'm printing on in this video so i just wanted to show you this So the first step, um, what you're going to do is once you get your piece of vellum out of the um, package, is you'll lay your piece of vellum down, um, put your negative down on top of it, and do a tracing with a pencil so that um, you'll be able to see where you're coating um, when you're coating this. And then the other thing is, um, I think it's in the corner that I cropped off in the photo, but you want to put a, an X on this. And I'm going to tell you why that it's important to do that because... Um, when you go to gild it, you want to make sure that you put the um, the gilding on the back side of the paper, not on the front. And because this is a transparent paper, it's a little bit um, tricky in a sense. I mean, it's not 
terrible, but it's it's a little bit. If you're not paying attention, you could put the the gilding right over top of the photo instead of putting it on the back of the photo. So um, you want to do that. And you can see this is a, a transparent vellum, but you can't really see through it. But light goes through it, and I guess that's what they mean by that. So it's it's not totally like transparent, but it will become more and more transparent as the um, the process goes on and um, as we varnish it, it, it gets very transparent and then the gold really shows through. So we would do this. This is our first step on the um, vellum. And then the next step is um, you would get your emulsion ready um, in your little cup and get your brush um, all cleaned out and then um, blot it off. So you would rinse your brush out really good with water, make sure you blot it, have your emulsion mixed. Um, in this particular case, this was Van Dyke Brown. I was I made a number of these in Van Dyke Brown and a number in um, Palladium. So um, I could look at both and compare both. But um, this was just getting that ready. Then um, we go ahead and pour the emulsion out on top of the piece of vellum. And we have our brush ready to go. And then this is what it looks like once it's um, been totally brushed on. And now this kind of is like the same process. Um, I, with Van Dyke Browns, I do the same thing actually and, and for um, like palladium printing. But before you dry this, um, you can dry this with a hair dryer. But before you dry it, you want to let it set about at least four minutes so that um, the solution can actually soak down into the paper a little bit. Um, you don't want it to let, let it soak till it's totally dry. Uh, Depending again, it depends on your humidity. If you have a 50% humidity in the room, you can actually just let it just air dry. But um, if the air is gonna, you know, if the air is really dry, it'll it'll suck it out, and you won't get a good print. You'll get a flat, a flat dry print from the um, moisture being sucked out of the paper. But um, and if it's too wet, it would take too long to dry. So it, it depends on your humidity. But I usually let them set about four minutes, and then I will go ahead and use a hair dryer on low heat or um, cool air um, and keeping it at least about maybe six seven inches away from the paper and drying it but the key I think is to making these really nice especially on vellum is to let them set about four minutes uh, before you dry it and then you'll see it's going to get wrinkled up here and here's a picture of the emulsion um, again this was Van Dyke Brown on top of this one but um, the Van Dyke Brown is just sitting there and it's been dried and now if you notice that, that the paper is fairly wrinkled in here, so what we have to do um, is we're going to have to um, flatten this out as much as possible before we go into our contact printing frame because if we don't, it's going to be hard to, um, you know, to get the wrinkles out. And if you don't have the wrinkles out, the, the print won't um, flatten out and you'll get like surface like this under the print and you won't get sharpness everywhere. So you want to make sure that it's really flat. And then this is, in particularly with this process, um, this is one process where it really helps to have a contact printing frame so you can push this down tight. Um, if you're just using a piece of glass, you may want to, um, you know, get a slightly bigger piece of glass and you might even need to put something on the um, the edges of it to, to hold it down tighter because you, you do need to have some pressure here. Um, you know, when you're doing it. So again, the best thing is if you just get a contact printing frame if you're going to do these. So the next step um, is if your print is dry and it's wrinkled, you need to put it between two pieces of mount board and then put it in your dry mount press. Now, if you have a dry mount press, this is really helpful. I'm going to show you another way to do this if you don't have a dry mount press. But you can also, um, you know, start looking around for one of these if you're going to um, be making a lot of prints and mounting your own prints because you can get them fairly cheap. Um, I actually bought this one off of um, a person I knew that bought it and um, was into photography for a while and they sold it to me for $600, which was great because... Um, I think they paid for just buying it like a year before they paid almost $2,000 for it. So a lot of times you could find these fairly cheap. Now people have them and they, you know, they take up space. And if you're not really using them, they, um, they, people just want to get rid of them. So I would look at like Craigslist and eBay and, and try to find one if you want to use a dry mount press. And it also helps for flattening other kind of prints and also making your own, um, making your own dry mounted prints or mounting your prints. 
So if you do use a dry mount press, um, one of the things you want to do is have it set to the lowest setting, which is on this one, it's 150 degrees. Um, so I, I would set this to 150 degrees and, and let it warm up. And once it's warmed up, then I would put the print between two pieces of um, four ply mount board and put it in there for about three minutes and that will flatten it out and make sure it's also really dry. Um, you don't want to leave it in any longer than that because that could actually evaporate um, you know, some of the moisture that's still in the emulsion and that's the reason you don't want to have it up really high either and then you would end up getting a really flat looking print. So it's important um, that you know it's only in there about three minutes and um, you know between two pieces of um, four ply mount board, a piece on the front, a piece on the back and at the lowest temperature of your dry mount press. And then if you remember the other wrinkled um, piece of paper, this is what it looks like after it um, comes out of your dry mount press and it's been flattened. So this will be able to go into the contact printing frame and make a really nice print. And you'll see I have a picture of it coming up. You can see even though it looks really flat here, it still has a little bit of waves in the paper because of the moisture that we put on it. So. Um, you'll be able to see the waves on the in the contact printing frame, but they won't be where the negative is because the thickness of the negative actually will add a little bit of um, more thickness to the um, to the surface right there. When you put it in the dry mount press, it'll actually press that area flat. Now here's the other method of uh, flattening that I was talking about that um, if you don't have a dry mount press, you can use two pieces of mount board and um, again use an iron on a low setting and make sure you don't have steam on and go ahead and um, you know press the mount board um, you know just kind of iron it and lift up and look at it and lift up and look at it and until you get it um, till it flattens out now you don't ever want to do this if you're dry mounting prints um, you know do not do this for dry mounting prints this is simply for flattening um, this type of print and you could try I guess using it if you wanted to flatten if you had some curled up fiber based prints you might be able to flatten them like this too but they're the fiber based paper is much thicker than um, the actual vellum paper is so I, you know, I'm not sure if it would work for that but um, you could just do it again um, for your vellum prints you can put them between two pieces of um, four ply mount board and then iron the top of it um, and it takes a while doing it this way but um, it will work And I wanted to show you this real quick. You could see by the shiny surface here, the reflection, uh, that this is in the contact printing frame. So you could see the glass. And this is what I wanted to tell you that you'll see sometimes is that the, the paper outside of it. But you could see like right here, it's become very flat. And that's because of the extra pressure that's been put on, um, you know, by putting your negative. And another thing that I do is, um, you know, you lay your negative down against the glass and then you put, um, you put your... Um, piece of vellum that's been coated with emulsion down against the emulsion of the negative and then something else that I do is I keep my 4x5 negatives in um, archival methods 4x5 paper envelopes and um, and then what I do is I actually set that paper envelope down around the back of the piece of vellum um, so that even makes a little bit more pressure right where the negative is when it goes in and that's that's important um, the reason this is so important is because uh, you have to have that negative really tight against the paper with none of these wrinkles um, or you're going to get blurry areas so um, so that it stays very sharp and your focus is very sharp. It has to be pressed down um, really tight right there. So then after it's um, exposed and developed and dried and everything, um, at this point what I do is go ahead and I put this again back into my dry mount press because once it dries it'll still be um, a little bit wrinkly and curly but it's not like as bad as it was when you first coated it with the emulsion so i do flatten it out really nice um, before i put the uh, gilding glue on and when i put the gilding glue on uh, it does tend to curl up a little bit but what i did is i i actually laid this down on top of a, um, a piece of white paper and then it's a, a piece of um, eight and a half by 11 just like typing paper I laid it on top of so you could actually see the way the the image looks and you could see this here is um, the black uh, foam cord that I, I work on so I just have this laying on top of that but you can see like the difference that that it makes you know so you can see how gorgeous the print is to begin with 
And this is the um, the gold sizing that I'm going to use to um, to coat on the back of the print. And um, I looked online again. I bought I bought two bottles of this about four years ago, I think. And um, this bottle hadn't been opened. The bottle that was opened um, totally had dried up. And I think this one's actually um, a little too thick inside of it. The the glue. I think that it um, actually evaporated a little bit. But I wanted to you know go ahead and give it a shot for this video. But um, it probably needs to either I need to either add a little bit of water to this because it's fair it's like a thicker glue than it should be or um, you know buy some fresh stuff but um, this is the brand that I have again whether or not this is the best brand um, I when I looked on uh, Amazon there was about 10 different types of this 10 different brands so I'm probably going to try a couple different brands to see uh, to see which one works better now the first print that I made with this um, for the video um, and I'll see if I can find the copy to show you the picture. But I used a regular brush like I coat with a, a, a an artist paintbrush and with bristles. And it actually left lines in the print. And I think that was because the sizing was so thick. Because um, I had used the brush before and it worked fine. But um, again, this was older. But it left lines in it. So I, I went and I, I ran down to the store and I bought a foam brush to coat this next print with. And the foam brush worked really well in coating it. It made it flatter. So you don't want to, you don't want to put this on so thick. Um, and again, you're going to put it on the back of the print, not on the side of the print that has the emulsion. So, the way the picture is right now, there, um, that's the way the picture looks. I need to flip this over because I'm going to put this on the back side of the picture. And let's take a look at that real quick. So this is this is the way again the picture will be reversed because you're um, flipping it upside down and you're painting on the back side, and this is the way it look. You get kind of a glossy finish, and you can see it's still still a little bit wrinkled after it dries with this on it. But this is actually the print that I made with the brush, not the foam brush, and um, you can see the lines that are made from the um, from coating it with the brush. So again, I'm thinking that this this emulsion that I was coating, this sizing was just it had, it had dried out too much and it's too thick so it's leaving you know paint brush marks just like if you paint a house um, you get brush marks so um, using a foam brush I really eliminated this but I just wanted to show you the way that the sizing looks on the back and you simply can you can blow dry this right away and um, use cool air and it'll dry and it remains sticky so it's uh, it's almost kind of like two-sided tape um, you know it's sticking to the paper and the other side is sticky it's um you know, it's 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 not super sticky, but it, it is sticky enough to take the gold foil when we um when we put the gold foil down. And again, you can use copper foil, silver foil, palladium foil. Um, you can use fake gold foil. Um, they have all different varieties um, that you can buy that are, you know fit a vast number of price ranges depending upon what you want to do. Okay, this is the. Uh, gold leaf that I, I bought and if I remember correctly for this um, package of um, I can't remember how many pieces are in it but I've, I've been using it for a while and I think it comes down to maybe around a dollar a piece or something like that I think I paid 20 bucks for maybe 20 pieces of it um, and they're, they're not real big you know they're small this is actually the size of it right here but what I wanted to show you on here and again you can get these in um, you know a less carrot if you want to or you can get them in you know fake gold or palladium or silver and it's just a matter of your your choice and this is the place I got it from up here but this right here this type thing um, I did some more research and um, seeing other photographers that did this and when I bought this I bought this transfer gold leaf and what the transfer gold leaf is is it's actually um, stuck to the piece of paper so when I put this down I rub the back of the piece of paper but they also make a, a loose leaf um, gold leaf and I don't have any of that right now but I'm going to get some of that and what that is is the really thin layer of gold is between two pieces of paper but it's not actually stuck to the paper so you can just kind of drop that down um, on top of your print and then you know rub your fingers over it and actually transfer it right to the to the back of the sticky uh, gold gilding uh, glue that's on the back of the paper so um, again there's um, let me let me show you here I pulled this up on Wikipedia or it's not actually Wikipedia but it's um, lollipop cake supplies I guess you can use this for 
put all the pot making lollipops but um it comes in two kind of sheets it is the loose leaf where the gold sits loosely between the sheets of the book and the transfer leaf where the the gold actually stays on the paper till you rub it and um the, the little bit of problem that i had with this with the um transfer paper was some some of the gold still wanted to stick to the paper so it wasn't falling off and i think you'll get if you're doing this for photographs again people do this for a lot of different stuff um they do this on wooden frames uh, they do this on cakes and stuff. A lot of the gold leaf you can buy is actually edible, so they put it on, um, you know, different different things. But, um, you know, for, for doing it on photographs, I think it might work better if you get the loose leaf rather than the transfer leaf. So that's kind of important. And this photograph will give you a little bit better um, indication of the actual size of the piece of gold leaf again this is a four by five contact print that i'm um, gilding the back of and again this was the transfer gold leaf so it does have the paper there so what i do is i lay this down on top of here and then i will just simply rub it with my fingers um, and you don't have to rub it really hard but um, you know i put a little bit of pressure there but you need to make sure with the paper one with the transfer you don't actually rub the paper because the paper will actually, it's not supposed to stick, but it does stick a little bit. And sometimes you'll get a little piece of paper on your print, and then it's going to be hard to get the gold, um, you know, the transfer there. you got to kind of try to rub it off, and it just can make a mess. So it's better to, um, I think, in the future, I'm just going to get the loose leaf gold to, to transfer onto here. But this is what I had. So, um, again, just rubbing it like that. And then once I've rubbed it... Um, so I think it's all, you know, stuck down. Then I will peel the paper off. And I made this photo of the one that I'd coated with the brush. And I just wanted to show you peeling the um, the transfer paper off. But again, this is what I, I found that when the glue was too thick, I, I ended up getting these lines in it. And um, highly undesirable. I didn't like this print at all when it was finished. But I uh, just wanted to show you that once you rub it, then you go ahead and peel the back of the paper off. And I keep uh, moving back and forth between prints just to try to confuse you. But um, this was the one that was done with the foam brush, and it's totally done. So I've what I've done is I used four pieces basically. You can see one piece here, uh, one piece here. Um, you know, maybe three quarters of a sheet there, and about three quarters there, going the long way. But so there's four pieces on here. Now, what you do once you're done is you look for little spots like this. Um, if you find a spot where there's not any gold, and first of all, I would just try to rub some more on there, lay a piece down there, and, and try for it to, to stick to the back. And if it doesn't stick to the back, what you could do is if you put this on like a light box, you could actually see the, the, the just like if you were putting, we used to do ortholitho film, and we would get this opaque that we would get in a little jar and paint um pinholes that um, came up in the ortholitho film which is basically the same theory um, what you're going to do is put this on a light table i see a little spot right here and you could actually just take a little bit more glue and put a little bit of glue right here and right here and any place that you have a spot where the gold didn't really stick um, you know let that dry for a couple minutes and then go back and just use a, a piece of gold on the paper and um, and rub it onto there and, and fill in all your little cracks and so forth till you get it just the way that you want it and once you get it the way that you want it, then you can um, go ahead and uh, coat it with varnish. And this is the uh, spray that I'm going to seal this up with. It's just crystal clear. It's used a lot in, in art applications. And uh, the important thing about the spray that you put on it is you want to make sure you get a spray that's non-yellowing. Um, in other words, it'll stay clear. And this one's been used on art um, projects by everybody for you know, since they invented it just about. So it, it's been around a long time. It's a good product. And this Krylon, they actually um, kind of cater to making um, sprays for art. So they make a diff lot of different coatings. Um, and you can look, at, look it up and see what the different coatings if you want to get a flat coating. This one's glossy that I'm putting on here. And again, this is just a coating I had. So I wanted to, you know, show you coating in the video. So that's why I'm using this. But um, you can, Hand and Meal also makes a paper for um, coating their inkjet prints that you could actually use on here. So um, 
you know, a number of different coatings, but you want to make sure that they, they are archival in the sense that they're not going to turn yellow because if they turn yellow, they're going to mess your photograph up and so forth. So you want them to be, um, you know, a good quality coating. And I think this is like nine bucks a can now with the inflation that's going on. But, um, you know, you could find it at the art supply place or probably on Amazon. And here's just a shot of the print before I um, coat it. So we'll take a look in a second at the, the print that's been varnished already or sprayed with the Krylon. But this was just the, um, the print right before I um, took it down to spray. And I did, again, you want to use this spray um, with a mask and use it in a well-ventilated area. Um, it is kind of cold outside today. And um, you don't want to do it when it's too cold, and you don't want to do it when it's really humid. If you spray your prints outside and it's really humid, the uh, spray will actually turn from um, clear to like a foggy white and leave like a foggy white on top of your prints. So, again, the humidity, it's important that you don't have a lot of humidity, that you have dry air, and that your temperature is probably around 70 degrees. So, um, what I did is I took this out and I uh, set up a board in my garage and I opened the garage door at the bottom a little bit. I put my mask on and I sprayed it um, and then I went back in the house and, um, you know, it, it's, it wasn't cold in the garage because, I you know, the garage stays warmer than it is on the outside. I don't have a heated garage, but um, it, because it is enclosed, it was probably, you know, 65, 70 degrees and, you um, and I sprayed the print and I let it dry and then we'll take a look at it. But I start with spraying the back of the print. So I spray the back first, um, put a couple coats on it to let it dry, put another coat on it if you want to, let it dry. And then once it's dry, flip it over and do the front. And what it does is it not only protects the print, it'll protect the gold from flaking off, but um, it really will make this more luminescent and um, transparent and it becomes much more beautiful. I think it's beautiful now, but um, let's take a look at it here with the um, varnish on it or the Krylon on it. And here's what the final print looks like after it's been varnished. Um, I was getting a lot of glare here, unfortunately, when I photographed this. And I think it's because the paper is still a little bit um, uh, wavy. So what I'm going to do is uh, I will put this um, in between a couple pieces of mount board and then put my um, print flattening um, metal on top of it to flatten it out or put a pack of mount board on top of it um, and let it set overnight to, to make it flatter and then try to take another picture of it. But I just wanted to show you this and um, I think it's quite gorgeous. Um, really like it. So uh, hopefully this will uh, get you started gilding some photographs in metal. Um, so if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and smash that subscribe channel and we'll get something else going for you. Go out there and gild some prints. Thank you.